You mentioned that ayahuasca reveals. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> oh no. The the darkness that's there in the in the jungle. There's beauty, but there's darkness. So what, what is what is it that ayahuasca reveals? What is the heart of darkness? Fuck! It opens the heart of darkness right up. Um, um, I'm going to show you a picture of of our shaman, and then I'm going to ask you if you want to do ayahuasca here. Mm -hmm. Not here in that sense. It's, it can only be done in the jungle. Anybody that tells you, I've heard people be like, oh, I did ayahuasca in Brooklyn last week. And I'm like, no, you didn't. <laughs> I, should, I actually told that to my native friends. I went, hey, guess what? I said, a bunch of gringos keep thinking they're doing ayahuasca in Brooklyn. And they <laughs> yeah. were like howling, laughing. They're like, you can't do it outside the jungle. And I was like, exactly. I've, ne I've never done ayahuasca. I would love to have, have uh, I've done or eaten whatever mushrooms. And sure. It's, it's a wonderful experience. I think it's wonderful, um, but ayahuasca, oh man, yeah. See, I had done mushrooms. I thought I was like, okay. And I, 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 <laughs> I yeah, I was like, I got this. I had my notebook. I was like, I'm gonna journal a little bit, yeah. you know, and then, but but you quickly, yeah, I quickly, quickly realized how out of my depth I was and how unprepared I was for what was happening. Cause you sit in a circle yeah. with these native guys and there's one, you know, he's got the feathers and he's old and he's got a face like the map of the world and he's, he's smoking this fat, old tobacco thing and he calls you forward and you kneel before him and you're going is it too late to back up <laughs> and everyone's you know there's one candle and he blows smoke over the over the cup and he hands it to you and you're like again it's these it's these it's these like these things that you can't argue with it's these facts so you're like as soon as this goes down i'm gone i know it and this is a moment in my life that i I have to either embarrass myself in front of everybody or I'm going forward with this and dish. And then I went and sat. And you're sitting in the dark and it's again, so we're we're on a platform with a with palm thatched roof and the jungle is all around you. So all those million tens of millions of frogs and insects are and I'm like, all right, cool. And I remember I like, you know, like I tried to like light a cigarette or something and I went. Oh, that's not gonna happen. <laughs> you know, and then I and I I put my hands on the floor and like my experience, I mean, like we've done mushrooms, so you know, it's like it's it's interesting, it's introspective. No, this this was like somebody unzipped the universe. I I you know, I spent a lot of without boring people with it, I spent a lot of time in 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 like unconstructed dream space, like floating between nebulas. Like there was a long period where there was no physical shape where I lived without a name. And like, so it's like, it's like you get brought so deep down, so elementally lost in the universe where like, I truly felt like I was experiencing moving through places like, like that, like that, uh, like that um, asteroid that I have. Like it's, it's like a piece of, it, your, your piece of something detached from the earth. And so yeah. I, I got back from it and, uh, had a, had a, a interesting new appreciation for life. Uh, I strongly suggest that people just do mushrooms like a normal person, unless you're <laughs> unless you're ready. So to, it was really intense. It was really intense. But to be fair, the shaman who did it was like the old school guy. Yeah, and he was he was getting up there in years, and he had forgotten and overboiled the brew. Yeah, and so we came back, and it was like four in the morning, and I had you know, all this crazy shit. I'd been on journeys and years down there. And so when I came back and I had like hands, I started yeah. crying. I started absolutely weeping. Gratitude or what? Gratitude that I was alive. I was going to get to see my people again. I was like, I'm going to get to see my parents again. Yeah. I'm going to get to so talk to you kind of thought you might have be gone. I was so gone. I was gone. I was a, I was a, I was a, a dimly conscious yeah. something floating in dark space and spent what felt like years down there and so when i i really did feel like being reborn which i was like cheap trick like yeah you <laughs> um but no the, the 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 way it moves you through the jungle the way the jungle moves through your skin there are moments of absolute majesty and incredible discovery that happen along the way um and on the way up the jungle brings you up and and the shaman brings you up and and you, and you get to move through the forest in a way that it's almost like you're inhabiting the consciousness of animals. Very, very, very like, I didn't think that hallucinogenics could do this to a, to a brain, you know? Mushrooms, you're like, oh, I can, I feel like I can feel music. Like, right. it's cool. Right. You know, you guys wanna watch <laughs> March is, of the Penguins? This, like, <laughs> this is transformative. Like what, Yeah. Th did that did that change you? I don't know. I think it, it definitely, it definitely, 
I, I almost feel like it showed me the thing that I was scared the most of. And it's that, that it was like that it's all just cold, dark, nothing. It like brought me to like the basement of the universe. And I felt like the point of that was to to come back to, to this place where there's all this life and light and love and and all this amazing stuff that we experience on a day-to-day -day basis and don't take for granted. And so just like almost dying, this was like fully dying. Like they're, you know. But the great part is, is that usually it's not that intense. This guy had overboiled the brew. Mm -hmm. He'd also, I saw the vine afterwards. Mm -hmm. Most ayahuasca vines are like as thick as your arm. This one was like as thick as a garbage can. It was like the oldest ayahuasca vine you can imagine. And at like four in the morning, I like crawled over to my friend, Chris, who's a tough New York City firefighter. And we were like holding each other, just like weeping, just like, thank God we're back. And uh, then we had to go looking for the shaman. Well, where the hell is this guy? He's gone. <laughs> Yeah. We found him in the morning and he was laying in the stream naked like ET at the you know at the end when he's like laying like in the Yeah, he he kicked his own ass with that brew and he retired after that. Oh shit. So, we really got like we the, somebody turned the dial all the way up on us and so we got we got <laughs> blasted. So, it's not supposed to be that bad. But I think you're somebody who's fearless in sort of oh. diving into those kinds of places i think i also retire from ayahuasca i could be fearless with other things but i think i'm good <laughs> it sounds kind of a, um <laughs> to me personally kind of exciting why well, i think i think that you have a severely fearless aspect to you i mean you're when you come up with something that intrigues you like if somebody told you right now that you could go physically into deep space i feel like you would do it yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah, if yeah. if go to Mars, yeah, right. And some of it is. I don't even know if you have that. Some of that is more Goggins like. I want to see where my mind breaks, by pushing it to tough places. There's a curiosity of exploring the mind, the limits of the mind. I feel like yeah, you. It's not a cold plunge. That's like you're not coming back. Right. Right, and that's it's okay. <laughs> uh, see, no, I have, I, I do, I have, I, I, I'm with you on that. I love seeing my limits. I absolutely love seeing my limits. I love getting my ass kicked. I love being shown how insignificant I am. But when it comes to something like that, where you got to push your chips in, it's got to be something for me. It's got to be a hill that I believe in before I die on it. And it's like, like to me, the the promise of exploring space isn't enough. Like even just the way, I mean, you said, you're like, I'm going to Ukraine, here I go. You know, there, there's a certain um, dedication to, to curiosity at any expense. And I think that that is something that maybe we share in, very, in, in, in different directions. Something tells me with, the, with, with, those, with those crocodiles outside, I would have gotten eaten. <laughs> something tells me there's some something trying to preserve you in this world. I'm not sure exactly what that is. Somehow you keep surviving.